What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Rob and in this video we're going to talk about why these cars are blowing up on track. I'm going to give you kind of my theory and uh, what we can do to stop it. Stay tuned. So we're going to talk about why I think these things are blowing up on track. And before we can get into that, I'm going to explain really quick on um, how the oiling system works in these cars. So we have a pan. Inside that pan holds the oil, right? Inside that pan, we also have a pickup or a pump. That pump will, you know, suck the fluid and push it through different ports and through different galleys in the block. And its job is to, you know, go and supply oil to the bearings, your crank, your rods, your, your camshaft, stuff like that, right? Now, as that's happening, it creates what we call a hydrodynamic wedge. And basically, your, your bearings, right? If this was your crankshaft, this was your bearing, it, it rides really close and it rides on a thin layer of oil. And the oil's job is to mainly lubricate and it acts like a, as a coolant also. And that's it. So your crankshaft and you know, all your rods and stuff, they're just basically floating on a thin layer of oil. So now that we kind of talked about that, these cars to begin with come with 020. Now that's how they're engineered and probably due to, to maximize everything um, like gas mileage and emissions, right? 020 doesn't leave us a whole lot of protection. So I think that's problem number one. Okay, so problem number two, the RTV. Now, when we, when these motors first started, you know, blowing up on track, people were pulling them apart and they're like, oh wow, there's a bunch of RTV in there and that's the cause. So I was like, well, all I do is track the car, I'm gonna drop the pan, clear it out and you know, give me peace of mind. But I noticed when I pulled my pan, like when I dropped it, I looked in the uh, pickup and there wasn't a whole lot. Um, not really anything for me to be concerned about. Like, it, it's not a good thing, but I don't think the RTV there was enough there to clog the pickup, which people think it was, you know, starving the pickup. I don't think that was the case for me and what I've seen from other cars. So that would be problem number two. All right, so the third problem, and this is what I think is really going on, is um, when you're tracking these cars, when you use a really sticky tire, like a, um, I like to use the RE71 RS, and I have a set of Hoosiers. You know, really sticky, fast 200 tread wear, and the other one is basically like a, a semi-slick. I, based off of the data that I've seen on my car, pull almost one and a half Gs through right-hand corners, and probably left too. But the issue is right-hand corners at high Gs that oil pressure is really low. Now, the data that I've seen, like it's like 27, 28, 29 PSI, right around red line, which is not good. On top of that, you throw in the thinnest oil that we're already running, so that's one problem. Second problem, you know, maybe RTV, but I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Um, but as these things, as we track without an oil cooler, I notice uh, my temps were 260 degrees. Now you're probably thinking, well, Rob, that's that's not really too high, which maybe, but where's it picking up that temperature? What's the temperature of the bearing in between the crank? How hot is that? We don't know. So imagine, you know, that bearing riding on this thin layer of oil that's really hot, getting really thin, I mean, 0 020, what is it at 260? 0 010? Like, we don't know. And, um, you know, like I said earlier, like your, your oil acts as a lubricant and a coolant. 
And if it's having trouble to kind of cool that bearing, it, that bearing can almost kind of like weld itself to the actual crank and that's how you would get a spun bearing or rod knock. So I think that's the real issue is that we're kind of starving the pickup. We don't have a bunch of protection and the temps are kind of are hot, right? So how do we solve that? Well, on my car, I use a color fittings oil cooler. Now, like I said, I used to see about 260 degrees on track. Now I see about 230. Uh, I also added the Jackson Racing um, oil shroud, which helps out. Um, it, it, the temps don't, you know, rise as fast, but they come down even faster with that. I also use a Tome baffle plate. It's like a multi-level um, plate where the um, the pickup tube kind of sits below the tube, and that's really going to hold the oil where it should be. And I think that I think that might be the fix. And this is the million-dollar question: Have we seen a car on track blow up with these few mods? One thicker oil, so. I run a 530 Motu oil, an oil cooler to keep it cooler and you know a little bit thicker, and then three, a baffle plate. I don't know. I haven't seen uh, many cars with these three mods blow up. Now I've seen them kind of blow up with an oil cooler, and that's that's some of the problem. You can have the best, coolest uh, additive package in your oiling. But if your pickup is not sucking it up, then what, what good is it doing, right? So I think, I think we're going to need these three mods, you know, baffle plate, oil cooler, and just, just better oil. Um, like I said, I run Moltool, uh, I run uh, sometimes AMS oil, and what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, drain the fluid, take it, send it, have, have them analyze it to see what's going on. Uh, I see now about 60 psi of oil pressure around these you know right hand turns at high g which is basically double what you would see without a baffle plate right so i highly recommend you do that um i have probably based off my callus about 11 track hours and probably anywhere between two and three thousand track miles on my car I changed the oil about every thousand miles and now I'm gonna start you know playing with different brands of oil like I said Moltu and AMS oil is what I stick with and um, you know so far so good I might even run a 040 weight just to get a little more protection a little more pressure um, on track maybe it's good maybe it's not but until I analyze you know, the 530 and 540, we don't know. We can assume, and it, it makes sense that maybe a thicker oil might be better. But, you know, until we see that data, we don't know. So that's what I'm gonna do um, with my car. Um, like I said, I, I'm curious to know, have we blown a motor yet with the plate, um, better oil and a cooler? I don't know. Um, if you do know somebody with that, um, Comment down below, let me know. Uh, you guys can reach out to me at um, Phelps underscore garage on my IG. Um, and that's it. So hopefully this video, I don't know, can, can kind of shed light on it because there's a lot of talk about this subject. And um, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I even worry, but I, I feel a little bit at peace. Uh, I don't, I don't want to call it like insurance, but maybe, you know, just peace of mind that I have these three mods that are, you know, hopefully protecting this motor. And at the end of the day, it's a $30,000 wet sump, you know, car that they want to sell to the masses. It's got a, you know, emissions, gas mileage, and like they said, they want everyone to buy this. And I know they sell the membership to track it. Doesn't mean it's a race car. It's far from it. Um, keep in mind too, 20 to 30 minutes at red line, four or five times an event. We're, we're asking a lot for these cars to do that. Um, and, you know, for me, like I said, 
use those three mods will kind of hopefully give you some peace of mind and you know hopefully it lasts long anyway that will do it for this video uh comment down below like subscribe thank you for watching